Son of there we go. What the actual hell was that last shot? What do you say, kids? Shot fun? Shotgun? The Nerf Rival Takedown XX800. Yeah, 2020. Well, well, we got it here in 2019 before the end of the year. This is quite literally Nerf's answer to, I guess, the Dark Zone Adventure Force Liberator. It's kind of the same thing. It's a pump action, Kronos. There's absolutely no surprise in here. It's actually more of a reshell of the Overwatch Reaper blasters, but with a pump action instead of the little thing down here. Just one little piece that connects to the whole sliding mechanism that has a pump on it with a track for that pump. Honestly, you could probably make a Reaper shotgun do that. On the back of the box, it shows breach load, trigger lock, pump action priming, use only official nerf rival rounds, shows the knockout, the takedown, the hypnos, and says to look out for the charger and the knockout. Single pack, but it shows two of them at a 25 round refill. Holds eight rounds and only comes with the eight rounds and charges you $20 for the privilege. Now I do wanna reiterate the fact that the Dart Zone Liberator does exist and it's actually $2 cheaper, although if this thing goes on sale, but that also holds more ammunition than this thing and I doesn't say anywhere it has slam fire, which would have made this really freaking cool. Come on, man. And yeah, I said shotgun, it only fires one at a time, although you might be able to double load rounds with it somehow. So, I mean, just don't eat me for that one. It does look comfortable. We should probably get it out of the box and find out exactly how much. Snip, snip, snip. All right. Virgin hands have not touched this yet. Oh. Oh, it is. Oh, it's so comfortable. It is. Damn. So very clearly, this is a Mossberg Shockwave. Like, it is a Nerf Mossberg Shockwave. There's no debating that. It has the same exact design. Oh my lord, is it comfortable. That, oh, I wanna spin it. Oh my god, it spins so good. How's the pump? Oh, oh, what the? Uh, oh, wow, that's actually, so, okay. Maybe you can see what's going on here. This first little bit is almost nothing. Then it clicks into place. And then the rest of it is insanely strong. Does that mean it's a strong blaster? Well, the box advertises, what, 80 FPS? So, so this sucker's supposed to hit 90 FPS. There's a little tiny hole at the top of it that you're supposed to reload that's barely bigger than around. It's actually sufficiently smaller than the feeding hole on a Kronos. That's a, it's not impossible to reload by any means, but that's definitely, I've already double loaded it, huh? huh. Um, I guess we'll just kind of pump it forward a little bit. So not, there we go. You definitely put one in the chamber too. She's sealed up. There is a, so it locks up, but this little button right there lets you, there we go. Just have to prime it back with a little bit of force, but now it's double loaded, so. You can shotgun with it. Take that, YouTube comments. I didn't get this far into the video. First of all, I want to see exactly how hard this thing's hitting because it says 90 FPS. That is so damn comfortable. Seriously, that is, oh man, that's going to be the winner for this thing. It's way more comfortable than the Liberator. And it's also smaller. This is a, this is a pump action blaster you could very easily secondary. It's, that's a thigh holster if I've ever seen it. This is, Oh my God, I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I do. 96. 91. 94. 87. So they might have, like, they say 90 FPS. I guess that's an average because this thing's hitting exactly as hard as I would want it to for such a small blaster. And since it's a Kronos platform, as long as the internals are stout, I see absolutely no reason you couldn't upgrade the spring in this. Although that priming at the very end, because that's a kind of a short draw, it is very, very stout. The trigger lock is right there. Oh, that's, uh, first of all, it's not ambidextrous. Second of all, that's kind of hard to manipulate. Not that I think you'd ever actually use the safety, but, and it just looks cool. Like this is one of the better designed blasters, especially with some paint to bring out some of these details that you can't really see through a video if I shine it in the light correctly. 
And it's not even painted on, it's just got the rival right there. I almost wish they wouldn't even have that, to be perfectly honest. It's this nerf rival right there, and that's not painted. It says on, I honestly just skipped this. I, I don't mind, it's again, it's cheap for a Hasbro blaster. I wouldn't mind if it just didn't have any of the other stuff on it. It's almost symmetrical on both sides and the front just perfectly, but it has that one little splotch of rival silk screening on it. Holy crap. Okay, let's take this thing outside and fire some rounds off with it. I want to see if it's accurate at all. I want to see how easy it is for me to do the double shot with it. And, oh man, I hope this is good performing outdoors because this is, I, it's a rival blaster I might actually really like. See how this does, take down. I'm gonna say that's a lot more accurate. I think those shots were my fault. Those ones that curved. I think you have an anti-foam field. Oh. Huh. Son of there we go. All right, aiming at the door. I mean, at the white square on the door, we're gonna see how close we can get to it. That's not bad. That actually worked. <laughs> and it curved around you. The takedown. I have a lot to say about this, and of course I have to kind of make my biases clear. I love shotgun style blasters. You can shotgun with this. That is a possibility. It's not easy to do. You can always remove the lock and probably get a better reliable double feed shotgun out of it but it's a shotgun style blaster. This form factor, love it. I don't like Rival, but just about everything about this blaster cosmetically and ergonomically, I love. I think it's wonderful. That being said, its overall length is still going to be longer than something like, say, the Charger. The Charger is literally the same length. They're almost identical. And the Charger holds 12. It's also semi-auto. This is not. That being said, from what I've seen with rival springers, they tend to be more accurate than their flywheel counterparts. Not saying it's very accurate, but it's a little bit better. And that I think is the inherent question about this blaster. Is this an excellent kind of long arm secondary that would be really useful in a lot of CQB situations that can actually hit stuff at range? Absolutely. The rival takedown is a joy to use, and if your target isn't too far away, you could easily hit them with it. I'm not gonna go for the argument, there's a shotgun, of course you can hit stuff close range. Anything can hit stuff close range. This isn't better or worse than anything else in my opinion. That being said, the takedown is so comfortable and it's so pointable and it feels so good in the hand. Ah, I just, I can't get over it. It's at 20 bucks, I, this is a winner. 
I think. It doesn't do anything new or different. It is a pump action Kronos, essentially, but we've had Kronos. I mean, it's just a copy of the Reaper Blaster, but in this form factor. I'm, I can't say bad about it, but I'm also not gonna say, this is the Rival Springer that's gonna change Rival Springer. It's not. It's cool, it's comfortable, it's a great secondary in my opinion. If you want a pump action, like I've wanted a pump action pistol for a while, this very much feels like what I've been wanting, but it's not a replacement for pretty much anything else. Secondary, definitely. Primary, I don't think so. And I think that's what's, and is it better than necessarily having a Kronos as a sidearm? Eh, that's debatable, holds more ammo, but it's way bigger and has less mod potential. I mean, you can obviously put a bigger spring in this. In fact, I believe I read this morning, somebody's already done that and got like 140 FPS out of it. So of course it will take spring upgrades and whatnot, although I'm a little worried about the linkage here. We'll have to open it up in another video. It's, it's not bad. I really do like the takedown and I think it's worth getting. My only real complaint on ergonomics is that this grip is a little too slick, but that can be fixed with like grip tape or just kind of stippling this. In fact, I think that's how I'm gonna go about it. Just taking a soldering iron and putting little divots in it to give it more friction. It's an awesome blaster. It feels really good to use and for 20 bucks, it's not expensive enough that I can't say, no, you shouldn't have one. I definitely think you should pick up the takedown at some point. But it's not going to set your world on fire, it's not going to change anything, it's definitely a lovable blaster, it's definitely something that you could use all day long and have a lot of fun with. And that might be the most important thing in a competitive scenario, where you actually do want to not goof around and do a little bit better. I don't think this really has that much of a place. That's my opinion, I'm gonna kinda stick to it. The Rival Takedown is a fun shotgun style blaster. It's got some utility, especially if we can remove this lock entirely and just let us double feed it whenever we want. And it's comfortable as all heck. And if, as long as you ignore the grip, not a very big package. So I'm gonna say definitely check out the Takedown if you can. But again, it's not gonna set your world on fire. Let me know what you think about the Rival Takedown down in the comment section below. Of course, I happen to really like it, but it's up to you to let me know if I'm on course with making this a definite pick for $20, and if you think it's a complete waste of time. That being said, I'm Walcom7, thank you very much for watching this video, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta